Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Primescape. Today I'm going to show you how to get better cooling with the stock fans on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro. Uh, I do want to make a note that I have a BL Touch unit on here right now. Uh, the module that I'm about to show you is not compatible with that. So those of you with a, a BL Touch auto level unit, uh, I'll be doing a video on the best cooling options for that coming up. Alright, so first let me go ahead and show you the actual enclosure. So this is just a fan cover. Um, it uses the default or stock fans which is why I like this one versus some of the other ones because you don't actually have to buy anything extra. Uh, you just print this. I think it took me about eight and a half hours or so to print on here. Um, but what it's going to do is it's going to force the air down these nozzles at the bottom pointing it directly at the tip which is going to give you better cooling when you're printing. So what that does is it's going to help give you better bridging and then uh, overhangs as well because it's going to cool the filament uh, before it actually starts to um, I guess move away from where it was originally put by the extruder tip. Uh, I did want to make a note here that um, I had to print this with brim support. If you look close here, you can see that this piece uh, prints pretty much by itself for a while and once it starts to do the bridge here, it keeps getting knocked out if you're doing skirt. Uh, here's pretty much an example of what happened. This was going great. Uh, it's got to the point where it started uh, doing the bridge It knocked this out and just became a mess, um, basically unusable. Uh, so I just wanted to make sure you guys know that it's going to be much easier if you just use a brim support on this. Um, don't go with skirt. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to zoom in on the printer and talk about what we have to do. Again, I do have the BL Touch unit here. I am not going to uh, screw that in when we put this back together. Um, I will be doing a video for those of you who do have the BL Touch unit uh, coming up soon. Alright, so before we go and get started, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks. I guess so I went ahead and zoomed in on the piece we're working with here it's gonna be a little bit awkward for me to get some of these angles so if you see me struggling that's why um, you're going to need a couple allen wrenches this is the one that came with the printer and then you're going to need a it's a 1.5 mil uh, for the actual screws here um, I just bought this little kit I had it laying around it has everything you need but let me see if this 2 mil works for this Yeah, so you're really going to need a 1.5 mil and a 2 mil Allen wrench if you don't have the tools that came with the printer. All right, so let's go ahead and get started by taking this uh, casing off. You just got the two screws here, uh, the one up top and then the one right next to uh, the BL Touch unit. Make sure when you're doing this that A, you don't lose the screws and B, um, be careful with the cabling. You don't want to damage the cabling or any of the connectors. All right, so I'm just gonna get this out of the way here. And get this pin I just dropped. Alright, so next thing we want to do is disconnect the fans here. So you're going to have four screws and then four more on the inside. Uh, pay attention to the direction of the fans. Uh, here we've got the actual labels on the inside because that's going to affect the airflow direction. Alright, so let me go ahead and grab this. These are the 1.5 mil. Oh, I guess only the outside is 1.5. The inside is going to be the two. I'm just putting the screws, I've got a little magnetic plate here uh, so I don't lose them, but I'm just putting them in there. Uh, also setting them aside so I don't get them mixed up and get these wheels out of here to be more space. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get these screws done again. Here's that fan, and then I need this one for these four screws. 
Uh, now that I got this off, you can kind of see right here where this was kind of the direction for the airflow. It had a little lip to force the air here. Um, it's not very good. It doesn't do a great job. Alright, now that we got the screws off here, uh, this is the stock fan cover along with the little airflow piece. Uh, we're just going to set these off to the side. Alright, so now we're going to want to mount this one uh, here, and then the big one goes uh, here. And then you've got the gap, um, so that you've got this gap here. There's a a piece that just pops on here once you have all of the uh, screws in place. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and screw these in and uh, speed up the camera again. Alright, one thing I wanted to show you before I put this piece on, see how you have the gap at the bottom? That's where the air is being forced out. You want to make sure that that is going down into the opening here. Alright guys, sorry, I had to turn that a little bit so I can actually get those screws in and because I have to take this one back off because I have the BL Touch, I kind of cheated and I only used two screws, but it works. Um, Alright, so now that we got this all together, we can just go in and assemble it.
All right, so let's go and grab the screw, get this lined up. Alright guys, now that we got this on, I wanted to make a couple points. Uh, first, I will be linking to this uh, fan cover in the description below. Um, probably should have mentioned that to begin with, but anything I talk about in the videos, I will have linked in the description below. Secondly, when you're putting this on, uh, two things. It's easier if you uh, don't have this top fan on uh, when you're putting this top screw in. So if you wanted to hold off and put in this fan on, you can. Uh, because this version of the print has a hole that goes straight through so you're not trying to get in here and angle it. Uh, two, um, I did have to bore out these holes a little bit uh, just to get the screws to go through. Um, I just used uh, another Allen wrench, a little bit bigger, but just scraped it a little bit uh, just to get the debris out of there. So um, all of that is now good. This is together. Um, as you can see, the cables are running through here. So now we were just Go ahead and plop this piece in, and you're good to go. Um, kind of show you here with the BL Touch unit, it goes in the same spot, so this part of the duct uh, would actually hit this. So that's why it's not compatible uh, with the auto uh, level unit. You're going to have to just have the one vent on this side. So I wanted to do more research on the best cover for this before I tried uh, doing a video on it. But I found this to be the best cover for any stock situation uh, for the Ender. Um, now, if they have one, if you wanted to get a bigger fan here, uh, you can swap them out and get a bigger unit. Uh, I was looking at that, but I thought that the majority of you would like to see this work with just the stock parts instead of having to go buy them. Uh, but if you are interested in the larger one, let me know. I'll do a video on that. Alright guys, so that covers upgrading the cooling on your Ender 3 or Ender 3 Pro with the stock fans. Uh, it's just a neat way to route the airflow with the fans that are already there uh, versus having to buy larger ones. Uh, it's going to give you better directional airflow right at the nozzle from both sides, which is going to help cooling to help with uh, mainly bridging and overhanging as well. Uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below. Like I said, I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, everything we talked about today will be linked to in the description below. Sorry, I had to pause there. The dogs were going crazy there for a minute. All right, so like I said, everything we talked about will be linked in the description below. Uh, I did this video because there are a handful of people who asked me for a recommendation and an install process. So um, that's kind of what guided me in this direction. Uh, I will do a video for a uh, better cover if you are using the BL Touch unit, which I will be. Uh, so I'll have to end up ripping this back off, but I still wanted to actually go through the install process. I think just showing you a piece and telling you here, put this on and do this is kind of pointless because uh, it's not actually going through the realities. Um, some of those realities being, like I said, I had to bore out some of the holes. I realized that I probably should have waited to put this front fan on because it would have made it easier getting into uh, this back screw location, things like that. It's just the little things you learn by doing it that just say, and here, here's a fan cover, just go ahead and put it on. Um, that just doesn't cover it. 
All right, so um, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below and I'll get back to you. Thank you.